coming up on ATV News. A local utility wants to raise the Cutler Reservoir. We'll show you how one family says that will wipe them out. A shooting involving three dogs at a Logan Park. We'll tell you why Logan police are having a hard time sorting out the blame. Construction around campus is probably slowing you down. We'll tell you when they say it'll be done. High school football is finally back in the valley. We'll show you which team might make a state championship run. We've been enjoying sunny weather this semester, but this wind is bringing in something else. I'll show you what during your full forecast. All that and more, this is ATV News. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Chaz Ricks. And I'm Taylor Emerson. Raising Cutler Reservoir could be putting homes in Cache Valley at risk. I went out to Benson to see how the rising water can impact families in the community. Fishing, canoeing, and playing in the water. That's some of the recreation at the Bear River in Benson Marina. But for Jason Watterson and his family, the bank of the Bear River is more. It's home. That's why Pacific Corp's proposal to raise Cutler Reservoir has Jason and his family fighting back. So we decided that the, one of the best ways to fight was to, was to organize, to use social media, to bring in a coalition of other concerned people that, that might be worried about what happens. If the reservoir is raised, the Bear River, which passes through Jason's backyard, and Benson Marina will subsequently raise, and his family will lose more than just land. It's generations of history. Jason's father, Jim, would lose the property and the businesses that he and his wife depend on. I just don't see how, with the acres we have, that we can continue to farm if that much of it is taken away from us. Together they run the Muddy Road Outfitters. They rent out canoes, host hunters, and raise pheasants, all on the banks of the Bear River. Acres of land dedicated to feed cattle would be flooded, and raising livestock would no longer be possible. It'll be rather devastating to the way we run our businesses right now. Jason Watterson says the decision to raise Cutler will impact more than just his own home. This decision will impact hunters, fishermen, canoers, and boaters that wish to cross underneath these bridges, like the one you see behind me and many of the river bottom and marshes unique to the area would be flooded, damaging the ecosystems that attract bird watchers, hikers, and anglers. Pacific Corp needs to, needs to own up to their responsibility and appropriately manage Cutler Reservoir. Visit our Facebook page for more information about the Don't Raise Cutler movement. Early Monday morning, USU students put flags on the quad to remember those who died on 9-11. Placing the flags on the ground, these USU students weren't even 16 years old when the terrorist attacks happened. But they say they wanted to do what they could to honor those who were impacted personally. Just stop and have your own moment of silence and just remember those who fell and just be thankful for those who are fighting so that you can have the freedoms that you have. Logan Police Department says a dog was shot at First Dam by another dog owner after the dogs got into a fight. But at least one of them was not on a leash. So if you own a dog, it's a good idea to be aware of local leash laws. One of the owners is a concealed weapons carrier who shot one of the attacking dogs at approximately 3 p.m. Logan PD says that pet owners have a lot of responsibilities. I think as a dog owner in general, I mean, you have a lot of responsibility with your animals and uh, take them to a public area. You have to be able to control them. Um, you have to know what the laws are. And if they're supposed to be on a leash, then you should keep them on a leash. Coming up, you probably noticed all the smoke in Cache Valley last week, but do you know where it came from? It's hard to miss the road construction near campus. We'll tell you when it should be finished.
Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Can you consider with me? Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. So the mission is for us to get a book to each and every child. <laughs> Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Welcome back. You probably noticed the haze smoke and that settled over Logan last week, and it may have even given you a cough or a headache. I asked some experts why the air was so bad and how you can protect yourself from it in the future. This is what a normal day in Logan looks like. But last week, this was the view from atop the valley. A cluster of wildfires burning in the northwest were to blame for this haze and smog. The largest fires were in western Montana, 17 of them, and 18 in western Oregon. But eight smaller fires in northern Idaho, nine in central Washington, and nine across California added to the poor air conditions. An east blowing jet stream pushed the smoke across the northern states and over Cache Valley. You could see the plumes, you know, coming from the northwest in a big, huge blanket covering all these states. That blanket of bad air was sad, disgusting, nasty. It was also as dangerous, if not slightly more dangerous, than our typical ammonium nitrate particles that we have in the wintertime. Breathing in those particles can cause anything from a sore throat, headache, and a cough to something much more serious, like the development of asthma, bronchitis, emphysema, and possibly cancer, but the list goes on. You may see people use one of these, a medical mask, to protect themselves against the bad air. But to be absolutely safe, you would need something like this, a respirator that's rated to filter out the particles that make you sick. But the simplest way to stay safe is just to stay inside, limiting activities outside, like biking, walking, and others, to a minimum. If it's, you know, a red day, don't go out that day. Wait until the air's a little better. Although the air in Logan is clear now, the fires in Montana and Oregon are still very active, and the air quality here in Logan could worsen again soon. If you don't attend Utah State University, you probably miss freelance photojournalist Jim Urquhart, who shoots stories for big names like National Geographic, NBC News, and the New York Times. Urquhart showed some students some of his work during the first lecture of the Morris Media Lecture Series. He also talked with students one-on-one -on -one about their career paths and things they could be doing now to help them with their long-term goals. Be prepared for something happening, no, so you're not just reacting. If you've driven around campus recently, you've probably noticed the closed intersection at 800 East and 1000 North. Alex Zellner shows us how USU is coping with the construction. New school year, new construction. With the intersection of 1,000 and 800 closed, USU has been forced to make some changes to keep things running smoothly. We've had to redo the bus systems here on campus and things of that nature, which is going to cause some congestion elsewhere. The change to bus routes has made the ride to school longer than usual, forcing some students to change their normal routines. It just like prolongs the amount of time it takes me to get to school. So sometimes I have to wake up a little bit earlier or I have to try to get to the bus stop like a lot sooner than I normally would have to. For those who drive to school, detours will reroute you up to 1200 East where traffic can cause you delays as well. I know that the 12th East is at a max right now, but that's the alternative route. Some people have chosen to ignore the detour completely and enter into the buses only entrance of this stadium lot. Doing so and ignoring that could put you, buses and pedestrians in danger. People don't realize do not enter means do not enter. People think that 
it doesn't apply to them all the time because that's a shorter route, but that's just too congested to have everybody coming in and out with all our students. Luckily, we haven't had that many accidents and people are being more cautious. Construction is expected to be completed in early October. Alex Zellner, ATV News. USU is pushing for construction to be done before the BYU football game September 29th because they're expecting increased traffic at that intersection. And you know, Chaz, I'm, I'm, I, I've had a hard time going through there. Yeah, construction is never a fun thing to deal with. And it seems like we're always under construction here. Yep. When we come back, Brady Clark will have your Clash Valley weather report. Your current temperature in Logan is 83 degrees. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. And to follow the swimming rules. You're always looking out for me and trying to keep me safe. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? Here in the garage. Closet. Shoe box under the bed. Where anyone can get to it. How safe is that? How safe is that? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. If you own a firearm and are not using it, please be responsible and be sure that it's stored in a safe place. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. In Utah, 1 in 8 women and 1 in 50 men will be raped. Also in Utah, 1 in 3 women will experience sexual violence. Of the completed and attempted rapes against college women, less than 5% will actually be reported. Sexual assault should not be a part of the college experience. Always get consent. Consent for sexual activity is enthusiastic. Consent is sober. Consent is non coerced Consent is verbal. Consent is mutual. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual assault, report it at reportingsa.usu.edu. Welcome back to ATV News. We have Brady Clark in the studio with your full weather forecast, but first he is going to tell us about the hurricanes that have been hitting the East Coast. Brady? That's right, guys. Hurricanes have been rocking shores in Texas and Florida, and people in Cash Valley are looking to help buy donating supplies. Rescuers are racing, people are still hunkering down in Florida, and crews are cleaning up in Texas. AccuWeather estimates Irma's damages to cost about $100 billion and Harvey's $190 billion. To put this into perspective, Hurricane Katrina, the most expensive hurricane in America's history, came in around $108 billion. I was really worried, um, really scared uh, for my dad and my aunts and all my friends that were there any paper products, supplies, like anything. Um, it would be huge to help us uh, start rebuilding again. Here at 1020 West, 200 North, you're going to find this gigantic truck at LW's truck stop hoping to help out the victims of Hurricane Harvey. You can find it here and you can find out at many other locations around Logan, Utah. We are very saddened and heartfelt for what happened with Hurricane Harvey in Texas. And that's why we're trying to get the people to come together as a community to help aid those that are in need. Items they are asking for include heavy duty garbage bags, large trash bins, five gallon buckets, and heavy duty work gloves. We just want, to want everybody to know that us as a community here in Logan, Utah, we care what happens in other places. And just so you guys know, that truck is leaving September 18th, but we're going to go we're going to go straight into our weather right now. If you want to look at our west coast right now, or east coast preferred, if you look over here over Ohio and Tennessee, you got some rain over here. 
And then if you kind of go along with my hurricane package, looking down at Florida right now, looks like it's clearing up a little bit. So that is good to see. Now, if you want to come over here to the Midwest, it's covered in Oklahoma and Nebraska. As you can tell, there's a lot of rain going on down here, and Texas is still recovering from uh, Hurricane Houston, uh, as you can see there. And then if you've gone far out into the West Coast, there's not much here. There's nothing in the nor uh, Northwest, but in, in California, you do get some showers there. If you want to move on into our Utah forecast, we got a little precipitation today. Be prepared for tonight. It is looking like a, a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms. So if you got plans tonight, just be prepared for that. But you got a little uh, storm coming out here. Nothing to be too serious about. If you want to go jump into our seven day forecast, we got Wednesday right here. Like I said, it is probable but not likely to have sh uh, showers tonight, but we got an 86 high with a 53 low. Thursday and Friday, if you had plans to go outside, make sure you, <laughs> make sure you find new plans because it is going to be raining Thursday and it will be raining Friday, but, and the temperature is going to drop significantly. All right, and then if you want to move to the weekend, we got Saturday and sun uh, Sunday. It, the temperature is decreasing significantly from our summer temperatures. We got Saturday coming in at 65 and Sunday at 69 degrees. But you're in luck. It is still pretty sunny outside, so you can go out and wear shorts still. And now we're going over to Monday. Monday, we're at 72 degrees. Back up to that kind of normal mid Wind, uh, fall, summer weather, little uh, warm temperatures. You got 72 degrees, so you're able to go out and do some fun things with your family and friends. And then Tuesday, we're looking at another rainy day on this seven day forecast. You got 62 degrees and a possible low of 37. So if you guys have plans for the weekend, I suggest altering them to go on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Forget about Friday and Thursday and Wednesday. And that's, that's it for me, guys. But, you know, the weather is looking to be pretty solid still. I, just, I would just suggest uh, kind of thinking of some indoor plans for today and tomorrow. And, you know, Brady, I don't mind it. I like the rain. I, I like kind of cuddling up with some Netflix and popcorn. I don't mind it. So, you know what? Thanks, Brady. Yeah, I'll be reading some Harry Potter. Coming up on ATV Sports, the Aggie football team struggled against the Wisconsin Badgers. We'll show you if they were able to bounce back against the Idaho State Bengals. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh, yeah. All right. All good. Take care. Way to go. Nice. Bring it on. Gotcha. I'm here for you. Oh, no. Please, please, please. I'm waiting. Interesting. Not buying it. Not fair. That's it. This conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to ATV Sports. 
Following a beatdown in Madison, Wisconsin, the USU football team was looking to bounce back and regain some confidence against cross-border rival Idaho State. After dedicating the game to the late, great superfan, Captain Aggie, the Ags jumped out early with this nine-yard run by junior college transfer El Toro Allen. On the defensive side of the ball, cornerback Jalen Davis led the Aggies with two interceptions, a great comeback response after being ejected last week by way of a targeting foul. Here, Davis reads the play and baits Idaho State quarterback Tanner Guler for a pick six. Senior quarterback Kent Myers made his presence known on Thursday, keeping it on the read option and beating the Bengals to the end zone. Myers had 85 yards rushing in the contest. Next, Myers showed his looseness, breaking tackles and finding his tight end, Dax Raymond, in the flat for the first down. The quarterback followed that pass with this 36-yard keeper up the gut for another rushing touchdown making that his 16th in his career. The second half was more navy blue on both sides of the ball with Idaho State struggling to keep the pressure off their quarterback, as we see right here. Newcomer Jordan Nathan had a good game receiving, finding the end zone on this play after a strike from Myers, who was the game's offensive MVP. And the special teams helped cap the victory with this block punt by Louis Compton. Aggies win 51-13. After the game, Coach Wells said that he is happy with his quarterback, but he will have to continue to make gains this season. A good step in the right direction for Ken, I thought, today. And, um, when, you, when you protect him and, and his guys catch the ball for him, as a quarterback, you, you gain confidence. Today, on Saturday, the team will be traveling to take on the much-improved Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. USU's women volleyball team is celebrating their seventh straight victory over Weber State today after blanking the Wildcats in Ogden. The team is, the team is seven and four on the season. You may have seen them on the field, the court, or the track, but now you can see them in the Hall of Fame. This year's class of USU Hall of Famers did not disappoint. Those inducted include Christy Denson Petit, a two-time Collegiate Gymnast of the Year in 1999 and 2000, Chris Cooley, a former USU tight end and Logan High graduate who set many records at USU and went on to play in two NFL Pro Bowls. Shane Bingham, a two-time All-American distance runner who still holds the USU indoor mile record. Gordon Belknap, the third winningest basketball coach in school history. Jamie Gordy, a record-breaking machine of a soccer player. And Nate Harris, the only three-time first-team all-conference basketball player. And finally, the great Stu Morrow, the winningest basketball coach in USU school history. Uh, Kent Bear, a native of Logan who played linebacker at USU, uh, had coached for 40 years and he was, not, uh, uh, he was not at the ceremony but was inducted into the Hall of Fame. High school sports in Cache Valley has seen some shakeups in the last two years with Green Canyon starting their first year of competition and Ridgeline beginning their second. For this week's prep sports spotlight, we decided to go see how the older schools are coping with losing their student body and players to the newcomers. First up, Madison High out of Rexburg versus the undefeated Skyview Bobcats. First quarter, it was all Madison. Here's Joe Doherty all over quarterback Jackson Sidaway. On the other side of the ball, Madison's O-line was protecting quarterback Jordan Porter as he slung the ball across the field. Eventually, that led to this touchdown pass to Blake Mosley for the first score of the game. 7-0, Madison. Skyview tried to return the favor with their air attack, but were denied by, Madis by Madison's Preston Weber and that crushing blow. The receiver would have to leave the game. Madison continued to air it out, hitting Doherty by the sideline for a big game. That led to this 15-yard pass to Coy Backstein, right there in the corner. With a score of 14-0, it was Skyview's linebacker Tony Torres that had to create some offense. He ran this interception all the way for six, 14 to seven, Madison. After long drives featuring runs by Cole Stokes and George Patino, Skyview scored twice, going up 21 to 14. Then in the third, Skyview ignited their pass game, hitting Ryder Lundell to go up 28-14. The next drive, they pulled out the old hook and ladder to get in field goal range to extend by three more. Madison wouldn't give up though, pushing their way inside the Skyview 10-yard line twice in the fourth quarter but the Skyview defense was up to the challenge. They kept Madison out of the end zone the entire second half, and Lundell 
ended the game by sacking the Madison quarterback and recovering the quarterback's fumble on back-to-back -back plays. Skyview remains undefeated, 31-14. Down on the south side of the valley, Stansbury took on the other undefeated local team, Mountain Crest. The Mustangs' Brady Hall showed up his arm early, escaping pressure and going deep to Bo Robinson for the 31-yard score. Later, Robinson showed that he wasn't just a good receiver, but a formidable rusher as well, waltzing into the end zone. The, the Mustangs would spread the love throughout this game, spinning it 46 yards to Cameron Mosier on this one for six. Mount Crest rolls 52-19. to 19. So guys, even though uh, both Skyview and Mountain Crest are undefeated, that'll have to end because they're playing each other in nine days. And that's going to be an exciting game, Bo. I just, I love having all these high school teams in the same region. It's really a great thing. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of competition in this region right here. Yeah, thank you, Bo. After the break, Logan Pride returned to Cache Valley Saturday with a message they wanted to share with the community. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Police say a faulty trailer floor was to blame for at least the death of at least three horses in Logan Canyon Friday. Utah Highway Patrol says the driver was unaware that the bottom of the trailer had failed and continued to drive for several miles, leaving a blood trail across the northbound lane of Logan Canyon. The incident is under investigation. Welcome back. You might not realize how big the LGBTQ community is in Cache Valley, but if you were at Willow Park on Saturday, you would have been one of the hundreds that turned out in support. The festival offered dancing, diversity, food, face paint, colors, and conversation. Businesses set up booths selling anything from clothes to real estate, while crowds enjoyed live music from local musicians. The organizers said it is all a part of coming together as a community. It's all about like awareness and love and acceptance and safety is one of our big things. About, like Thank you for joining us on this ATV. I mean, Guys, the Logan Pride, I went out there, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I wish I could have gone. That, I mean, that just looked like a great time to me. The music was good. I mean, the food, they had Morty's out there. It was a good time. Mm, love me some Morty's. Thank you for joining us in this edition of ATV News. Make sure you watch all the light, latest editions of AP, ATV News at, at AggieTVNews.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Have a great day, Aggies.